why should we talk about remittances? Now we see a lot of very exciting innovation in the finance space and many of the speakers before have mentioned the areas that are now being disrupted by digital. But now, why remittances? Aside the fact that I need to sort out my own problem of how am I going to send money to my mom. It is a huge opportunity in terms of remittances. And we're talking about remittances, sending money from the developed to the developing world. It represents a $600 billion industry a year. And now some other interesting facts. Now a quarter of a billion migrants worldwide this year. And if some of you have attended the workshop this morning with the Bill Gates Foundation, as many as two billion uh, people around the world are not banked. So trying to figure out how we can fix this uh, industry, we looked at three global megatrends that then led to finding this one opportunity to disrupt the remittance space. Let's start with the explosion of remittances, the rise of remittances. As I said, $600 billion being sent uh, globally at the moment. The World Bank estimates that as many as 700 million people globally are sending or receiving remittances. That means that remittances impact one in 10 people globally with the traditional average cost being approximately 10% of money sent. Now, the huge opportunity for us is that still over 90% of all transactions are being sent offline. These are people going to brick and mortar shops, handing over cash and doing this every month to provide for their families back home. The second trend we looked at was of course the online and mobile ubiquity. We now have approximately 2.1 billion smartphones in the world, but by 2020, this number is expected to go up to 6 billion, and the majority of that growth is going to come from emerging markets. Now, that, of course, creates a tremendous opportunity for creating mobile financial instruments to promote inclusion. But it's not only smartphones, it's also feature phones, and the mobile innovation is already happening in certain parts of the world, such as Kenya. I'm sure some of you have heard of M-Pesa. It's a model whereby you can pay with an SMS, go to a shop and pay with an SMS. The introduction of this technology has led to a situation where the disposable income of an average Kenyan has risen from 5% to 15%. And now 60% of Kenya's GDP is held in mobile money. This is the power of mobile innovation. And the third um, mega trend that we looked at was the rise of social media. Now, I guess if I was to ask you if any one of you has been on WhatsApp or Messenger today, probably all of you would raise your hands. And this means that there's only one sensible thing. If migrants and migrants especially communicate over social media and messenger apps every day because this is the way in which they can communicate with family back home, why would we not put the flow of funds where the flow of information already is? And that all led us to ASIMO, which is the reimagination of money transfer in this very digital and mobile age. One of the reasons why we wanted to do this was, again, I'm going to refer to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. In 2011, Bill Gates said that if the average transaction cost of remittances was cut from 10% to 5%, that would unlock $15 billion in poor countries. And to give you an example of what this means, this could feed the whole population of Ethiopia for six months or buy a mosquito net for every inhabitant of Africa and Asia to prevent them from malaria. 5% target, ASIMO only charges 2%. Now, how can we do that? Traditionally, when you think about the brick and mortar players, such as Western Union, there is a whole value chain, the agents, master agents, everybody needs a piece of that pie. Through ASIMO, thanks to the fact that we connect our customers directly through the API to a network of our payout partners, we can lower this cost dramatically by removing the middleman, which makes ASIMO cheaper, lower exception, and accessible to our customers through our website or our mobile app 24-7 whenever they need to send, be it on the bus, on their couch, or enjoying time with their friends, or very often working extremely hard. And let's remember that migrants are quite often not those that sit at their desks with the ability to use their computer or to just pop out to a branch to send money. Putting it in their smartphone is giving them the um, the utmost flexibility. We are live in 22 European countries. Just two weeks ago, we launched in Sweden and Denmark as well, which I'm very happy about. And we are the largest digital-only network out of all players out there. 
It means that we can send money from 22 countries to over 190 countries. We can serve customers in over 70 currencies. We pay out to bank accounts, but this is not the most important part. We pay out to cash pickup points, mobile top-ups, mobile wallets, and in some countries, the home delivery as well. And this allows us to reach 5 billion people globally. Now, why is this important? Because as I said before, 2 billion adults don't have bank accounts, and we need to make sure that we provide these people a way of delivering money to their families, a way that fits them and fits their family back home. We are now um, basically becoming popular, which I'm extremely proud of. Around the world, when you look at this map, you would basically be able to map it out against the migration uh, census that is coming into Europe and we're growing in all these markets. We are four years old, we have two offices, one in London and one in Krakow, Poland, where I'm from, trying to give, a, give back to my country too. And um, we're growing our user base in, on all continents. And this is why I was supposed to talk about the future of international payments. As far as I'm concerned, the banks and the brick and mortar shops are going to continue decreasing their market share and companies like Asimo are going to become a preferred option. Also, we're going to see that the necessary financial instruments are going to move onto mobile and onto messaging apps. Innovations in payments is not about how people pay. It's about allowing people to do what they want to do. It's about going to the gym and forgetting your wallet and on the way to the gym still being able to send money to your family or pay for groceries. So this is why we need to put it as part of our everyday life. Also, customers in emerging markets are going to become part of the global economy and that gives us the room for the next one billion company. I'm very confident that it's going to be us. Thank you very much for having me today.